Okay, we are here, Facebook people. Good morning. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. It's good to be with you all. And uh, we are excited to welcome you <laughs> and uh, to so new. spend a little time in uh, the Gospels. Uh, that's always a, a favorite spot for me. Good morning, morning everybody. Michelle, morning, Joe, too. and Dale. Good to be with you this morning, Deb. Hi, Deb. Good morning. Let's see if we get any other. We got some phone people on, it looks like. 13. I don't know if the wall will stay on. That's kind of the challenge. <laughs> Just see if the wall will stay on. See if we get anybody else coming on this morning. A couple more jumping on our Facebook Live. Hi, Cindy. Good to see you. Or a small picture of, I think it's Andrea there. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Good Ooh, morning. We could bring Hi, you on camera, Julie. <laughs> Julie. Hello, Carol. Good morning. Happy Wednesday, everyone. All right. Shall <laughs> we? Let me get going. Oh, sure. Uh, do you want to read me the verses? I certainly can. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. Uh, our daily watchword is from Ezekiel uh, 18, verse 23. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their evil ways and live? Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their ways and live? Kind of a powerful word uh, that we hear there that, that God it does not take pleasure in the death of anyone. Uh, that they should rather that they should turn and live that they should come out of the darkness as we hear in this next uh, passage from John chapter 12 come out of the darkness and experience the light of life the light of Christ from John 12 verse 46 it says I have come as a light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness I've come as a light to the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. John 12, 46. Well, today we pick up on a, I guess you could say a nighttime darkness scene. <laughs> That's right. Um, That's right. As, as Jesus uh, just fed the 5,000 uh, yesterday and then uh, his disciples take off in the dark in the night. They face some storms and uh, some powerful things happen on the water. And it's, it's there that um, uh, they invite Jesus into the boat. And I think that's an important um, word for us today. So I'll let you read and talk a little bit about that, uh, Rachel, and then uh, we can All right. go from there. So we are in John 6, John 6, starting at verse 16. John 6, starting at verse 16. When evening came, Jesus' disciples went down to the lake where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When the disciples had rowed three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were terrified. But Jesus said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Then the disciples were willing to take Jesus into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there, and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. Um, so a couple, couple of things. There's almost like two parts to this reading today. Uh, the first one is uh, the disciples in the storm and 
uh, you really get a sense of uh, strong wind, rough waters, uh, the disciples rowing for three to four miles into headwinds, uh, tired and scared. I don't know if I've ever, have you ever, I, <laughs> yeah, you've rowed in a boat canoe, in a canoe, canoe in, in a bon storm. boundary waters, uh, for sure. Um, and I think it's, you know, we're living where we live and maybe not being on the water, it's hard to um, maybe always imagine it. And yet in our life, we can imagine what that looks like. And, and my hunch is that some of you may be feeling like that, that you've been um, rowing for a long time, um, fighting some strong winds and some rough waters. Um, Jesus says, don't be afraid. And then uh, this is the, the part, it's almost uh, like a turning in the disciples. They were willing to take Jesus into the boat. And um, this morning, I think for me, um, what really grabbed my attention is just to be willing to let Jesus in the boat um, and to say again, Jesus, I, I want you to steer my boat and, um, and let God take the reins. One of the things that gets us in trouble is when, um, uh, when we think that we are in control of everything or try to grab control and um, try to fight the storms that way. And it's interesting, when they let Jesus, they were willing to take Jesus into the boat and they got to where they were going. So that speaks to us personally, uh, speaks to me personally, but um, it also speaks to us as a church that we at, at Bethel uh, want Jesus at the helm and that the shore that we are headed to um, is really that people would experience the life-changing love of Jesus. Um, it, it changes everything when they do. And, and so we want to be a people that, despite rough waters, um, have Jesus in the boat with us, steering it, and, and the Lord is in control. And we trust the Lord for provision and protection. And you I think, yeah, yeah, and then I think, you know, it's important, um, you know, we may find ourselves in these dark times struggling like the disciples were. And as Rachel said, you know, I think it's important for us to recognize who's steering our boat, yeah. uh, letting Jesus steer their boat. Because when we do, people become curious. And I think that's yes. the second part of, of the reading for, for today. Uh, you know, when we have Jesus leading our lives, people become curious and they want to they understand why. And that's really what kind of happens in that second part of, of yeah. the reading. The people experience Jesus, a mir mir miraculous uh, encounter with him in the feeding of the 5,000. Um, and, and they wanted to know who this, this Jesus was. Um, and I think that's important for us uh, to recognize when we allow Jesus to steer our boat, people will become curious. And uh, it's important for us to be ready to give answer to the hope that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, that Jesus is leading, he's in control. Yeah, things are dark, things are scary, uh, but he is in control and he is good. He immediately brought the disciples to the shore. Um, and, and Jesus has a plan for, for our lives and we can, we can trust him in that. Yeah, so um, really appreciate being in this text and... Um, uh, so relevant to our lives with some of the storms that we're facing, probably both on individual levels, but then also, um, you know, as a nation. So um, let's go to yeah. the Lord in prayer. So okay. just remember who's steering the boat today. <laughs> Invite Jesus in. Yeah. Uh, some prayers today for our neighbor of, of ours. Uh, it's their nephew. His name is uh, Brayden. You uh, saw Nora's post, post perhaps. Yeah. Uh, and what is it? Lym lymphoma. A lymphoma. A lymphoma. So he's a young young boy. So we pray for them and that family. Uh, Joey's friend, Kiev, uh, long recovery, uh, is in the burn unit um, yeah. and dealing with some real, real difficulties. So we pray for him. Uh, we're really grateful to hear the news this morning that Jordan Krejci, uh is feeling a thousand percent better, is what Sandy told me this morning. Uh, and so we're really grateful for that. Continue to pray for Eve uh, Trout. I know she's really, really struggling. Uh, has struggled for a lot of years. Uh, just pray for Eve and for Frank, and that the Lord would be um, would be with them. Well, and bring hope. Bring yeah. some hope. 
Uh, and then just really a willingness for us to let go of control and let Jesus uh, in our boat and steer our boat uh, today and every day. Uh, so let me pray. Father, we come to you today. Uh, grateful that you are light in the darkness. <laughs> grateful that it's not your desire that anyone should perish. Yeah. Uh, but that we would all come to know and experience the life, your life-giving love, Lord, that you have for us, your children. Give us that same heart, Lord, uh, that all would come to know uh, you and the truth. Uh, that, that your light would shine in the darkness and that your light would shine through us. Uh, today, Lord, as we face darkness, as we face storms, as we face tiredness and uncertainty and fears, Lord, uh, you come to us. Um, you come to us in miraculous ways uh, and you offer yourself up, up to us again today. And so with those words, do not be afraid. Um, that assurance, that certainty that we not, not live in fear, uh, but that you are with us. Lord, we want to make you the captain of our boat today uh, and know that you are good and that you have good things in store for us. Uh, and when we do, Lord, when we let you be in charge, uh, other people will see that and be curious. And so, uh, Lord, give us um, that opportunity and, and that place uh, to speak in the lives, into the lives of others. Uh, today we pray for... Uh, Brandon, uh, the young boy, Braden. Braden, with the young boy with lymphoma, uh, that you would just uh, watch over him, Lord, uh, bring healing to him. We pray for his family in this time of uncertainty and fear. Uh, give them your peace. Uh, for Kiev, who is recovering uh, from a car uh, accident, uh, Lord, uh, use this uh, this for good in his life, even though it is so difficult and I'm sure very. Uh, very taxing for him and his family. Uh, for Jordan, we're grateful, Lord, for your hand of favor on her, uh, that you have brought healing to her. Uh, we pray for all who suffer from this disease. Uh, we pray protection around all who suffer from this disease, uh, Lord. And we pray that it would be over soon. Uh, for Eve and Frank Trout, Lord, for hope for them in the midst of difficult, hopeless at times feeling situations, uh, bring them your hope, Lord, uh, and your presence. And uh, finally, Lord, uh, for each of us that we would be willing to let you uh, take control of our lives uh, and, and lead and guide and direct us, Lord, uh, today and every day. And so we pray all of this now in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, good to be with you guys this morning. Yeah, and very good. Um, <laughs> we will look to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.